Well, I haven't got a symbol today, really. I'll make one up. Okay. So I've got, uh, I wanted to talk about Heisenberg's microscope, which comes back to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which we've talked about in various contexts. Um, but this is a slightly different take on it. I need to give the brief summary as to what we have talked about about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle just to explain why what I'm going to say is different. The version of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is basically this, this thing about the fact that you can't measure the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time. So you can't measure where it is and how fast it's going both at the same time. And this is, you know, this is a very well documented phenomenon in quantum mechanics. We know that it's true. It's sort of unavoidable because it actually follows from a mathem it follows from the mathematics. It follows from a mathematical technique called Fourier analysis. We know that momentum is associated with the wavelength of a wave. Okay, and so when you've got a particle with a particular momentum, that means it's a wave which has, you know, a very particular wavelength to it. And the only way you can have a wave with a very specific wavelength is if it goes on and on forever. So that's a particle which has incredibly well-defined momentum because it's got a wave that goes on forever, so we know exactly what its wavelength is, but we don't have a clue where it is because the wave just goes on and on forever. So the way you can make something more localized is you, what you actually want is something like this. It's still a wave, but it's kind of more localized, right? It's a little bit of a wave, but it's all within some little distance delta x. But what this technique of Fourier analysis tells you is that actually to make a wave that looks like that, you have to add a whole bunch of sine waves together. Right? The way you make something that looks like this is by adding waves of slightly different wavelengths. And in the middle here, they all interfere with each other in a constructive way, so they all add up together. But when you get out here, everything's interfering with everything else and you end up with nothing left over. So the way you make one of these little wave packets where you've got the wave kind of restricted in space is by adding a range of waves together. But of course, each of these waves has a slightly different wavelength, which means they have a slightly different momentum associated with it. So now, although we've made the particle nicely localized in space, it no longer has a well-defined momentum. It can only, you know, it's, we know it's, it has a momentum that's somewhere in the, associated with the range of this wavelength. The thing about this is it doesn't actually, although it looks like, you know, there's kind of a wavelength associated with this, it's because it's not a nice, neat sine wave anymore, it doesn't actually have a single well-defined wavelength. And in fact, the only way you can define the wavelength in this is in terms of the wavelength of all its constituent parts. So that's why it doesn't have a well-defined wavelength, so it doesn't have a well-defined momentum. And the more we squash this thing up to make the position well-defined, the wider the range of wavelengths we have to need to add together to make that squash thing, so the more uncertain the momentum becomes. So that is the Heisenberg uncertainty relationship that says that the better you measure the position of something, the less well you know its momentum, or the better you define the position of something, the less well you know its momentum. That's where we were. The classic question that gets asked in the comments sections of YouTube videos, amongst other places, is, well, why don't we just do the job really carefully, right? If we've just got a particle, why don't we just measure its position and momentum really carefully, and then we'll know exactly where it is and we'll know what its momentum is, right? We can measure its momentum. So there's none of this messing around with adding waves together. Let's just do the experiment as carefully as we can and actually measure the position and momentum of a particle. So Heisenberg set up this thought experiment, called, which is now generally called the Heisenberg microscope, where he thought about what's the carefulest way that we can measure the position and momentum of a particle. So that's what he did. What particle are we talking about here? It can be any, I mean, he, I think he thought about it in terms of an electron, but it can be any particle you want. It really is, it's because it's a very general experiment, right? Basically all he did is he said, here's my particle, and I'm just gonna look at it, and I'm gonna look at it with a microscope. So I'm gonna point a lens at it, basically, because all a microscope is in crude terms, is just a lens, okay? And then I'm gonna have just a single photon of light come along, bounce off that particle, and end up going into my microscope, okay? And then I'm gonna make a picture with just this single photon, because that's, you know, I want to do this as gently as I can, so I don't want to be bombarding my particle with lots of light, I just want to touch it as gently as I can with a single photon. So, you take a picture of these things. Now, one of the things, another of the things we've actually made videos about in the past is this, this effect called diffraction, that says that actually, if you've got a, a lens or a mirror of finite size, you don't end up with a perfectly pin-sharp image you end up with the image slightly blurred out through these effects of diffraction. And it's why, you know, one of the reasons why astronomers like building bigger and bigger telescopes is because the diffraction limit gets smaller and smaller, the images get sharper. Which means that if we were to look at our particle with lots of light, we wouldn't see it as a single point, right? We'd actually see it blurred out a bit, just from these effects of diffraction. Even with one photon? Well, if we've only got one photon, it's even worse than that, right? Because this is just saying that actually if we make this image here with lots of photons, we'll see it blurred out like that. If we only see, use one photon, it could be a photon that arrives here or in the middle here or over here. So actually there'll be an uncertainty in the position just associated with the fact that we're only detecting one photon. And so there's a fundamental limitation as to how well we can measure the position of our particle that's just due to these diffraction effects. That the or, fact that that's... Or you've just got a rubbish lens. Okay, so let's fix the lens. 
So the, 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 and we can do that, right? Because we know that the formula for diffraction says that the, the amount this thing's blurred out by, let's call it delta theta, is something like the wavelength of the light you're using divided by the diameter of the lens. Okay. So there's two ways we can make delta theta smaller, make our images sharper. Either we can use a shorter wavelength of light, make lambda smaller, or we can make the lens bigger, d diameter bigger. And indeed we can do that and we can make our images sharper and sharper just by making the lens bigger and bigger or using shorter and shorter wavelengths of light. However, that creates a problem of its own because let's go back to our picture. We've got our particle here, light arriving. And what's going to happen is that light's going to bounce off the particle and head off in some other direction. And just by conservation of momentum, if the photon's gone kicked off that way, then just like billiard balls bouncing off each other, if one ball goes off that way, this ball's going to recoil in this direction. And similarly, if it happened to have bounced off in this direction, it would have recoiled in that direction. Now, if we make the lens bigger, we've got a whacking great lens here, then actually photons going in a very wide range of possible directions will all end up going through the lens because we've made the lens bigger so it's going to capture them. And because of these, th these photons are now heading off in, in extreme directions, that means that there's, they've kind of bounced harder off the particle here so it's going to get a bigger kick in that direction. So there's now a bigger range of photon directions that are going to get caught by the lens to make our nice sharp image. But because there's a bigger range of photon directions, that means there's a bigger uncertainty because we don't know which direction the photon went in. Therefore, we don't know what direction the, the electron got kicked in and we don't know how hard it got kicked. And so there's a bigger uncertainty in the momentum of that particle. So that doesn't, you know, so, so that sort of, that, that doesn't help us in that we get a bit, or at least that sort of illustrates the problem, that we can make the image sharper and sharper, but by making the position known better and better by saying, I've got a really detailed picture and it's just there, um, suddenly the uncertainty in the momentum of the particle gets, gets larger. And, and so the, then the other thing we can do, remember, is we can change the wavelength of the photon. And if we change the wavelength of the photon, that's going to make the image sharper. But of course, the wavelength of a photon is associated with its momentum. And if we make the wavelength shorter, that makes the momentum of the photon bigger, which means it gives the electron a bigger kick as it goes past. So that also means that it gets kicked off in some arbitrary direction by a larger amount. And there is no way around this trade-off between the two, right? If you optimize your microscope more and more for making the images sharper and sharper, you'll give the, the particle that's being imaged a bigger and bigger kick in some random direction and really not know where it's going. And that's, so that's the essence of this. Well, it's a very elegant sort of, it's a thought experiment that Heisenberg did of saying, you know, am I just being stupid here? Is there some clever way I could actually measure both the position and momentum of the particle at the same time? And it turns out you can't. Well, why not come up with a solution that doesn't involve smashing it with a photon and use it, or using a lens? Come up with a new way that's, the, that's my problem. I, I just think, you, I think you're using a blunt instrument. You know, a microscope is... But how much, how much, you know, how much subtler can you get? I'm just using a single photon of light. I'm, it's the minimum disturbance I can possibly do to this electron. It's just, it's just illuminating it with a single photon. Anything else I can do is going to be worse than that. Right? I've got to illuminate it with something because I've got to see it to no, know where it is. No. So how am I going to know where it is if I don't see it? You know your son's at school at the moment, even though you can't see him, for example. Like, there are, there are other pieces of evidence you can use to know information. Why do, you have to, why do you have to see it to believe it? Can't we come up with a new way to figure out what our particles are doing? You've got to measure it, right? You've really got to measure it. You can't just go on faith that, you know, the particle's there. You've actually got to measure it. To measure it, you have to interact with it in some way. Just, just to ask it, if, are you there? You know, and so actually, this is the subtlest way you can think of of interacting with a particle to find out whether no, it's there. No, it's or the not. subtlest way Heisenberg could think of. Okay, so it turns out. So it turns out you touch on an interesting point here because this was so Heisenberg came up with this thing in 1927. Right? People are still arguing about whether it's right or not. People came up with this way of actually trying to do this kind of experiment, and a couple of years ago came up with a result which seemed to do better than the Heisenberg relationship said you could do. 